Hello and welcome in this uh, what's new video about Picto. Version 2.6 has just landed and I'm going to walk you through the main features. In this version we've introduced something that has long awaited by our customers, which is the ability to deduplicate and do curling on collections of images. So you can run those tasks either on all your collections, all your images, or you can select either a source or a group of sources, or you, you really uh, configure the, the, the duplication scope as you want. Here I'm going to use one uh, collection here that I'm going to deduplicate. The deduplication tool is this little loop on the left hand side. So I click on it and here I can see that I'm going to run on a little bit more than a thousand photos. And basically what we propose is a number of templates for the duplication and culling that drive um, those items at the bottom. I'm going to walk you through that. So if I select, for example, the deduplication, it's going to look to group fairly identical images. On the other hand, if I do culling, it's going to create groups of resembling images. Um, and I can drive the, that slider to the left or to the right based on what I really want to do. Here I'm going to drive uh, that slider to really do the duplication. So I'm moving fairly to the left like that. The second thing that those templates drive is what kind of rules we're going to apply. In the case of the duplication, really the um, rule that selects which are the images that we pick and which are the images that we uh, reject is probably based on uh, the type of image, so the format. Here I, I want to privilege raw images. Uh, I also want to privilege the largest images that I have. And if I have any rating, I want to preserve the ratings. So keep the images that have the, the better rating. If I go to portrait, for example, maybe it's a different rule. Maybe what is more important for me is the face quality. Um, if I do collection calling, it's maybe the aesthetic score of the image that it comes first. So I can choose the rules. There are a number of rules that I can use. And of course, I can change the order in which those rules are being applied. So let's go back to find duplicates. My rules say that I'm going to privilege row type, image size, and then rating. I will disable the rules for now. I'm going to um, run the rules manually in the next step. So let's launch the computation. So what I get is here is a, a number of clusters that group those images that are similar and whose similarity is controlled by that slider that we just saw. And basically out of those clusters, um, this is where I'm going to pick images and reject others. But these clusters are uh, sort of my base material for doing the deduplication. All the other images that are not in those clusters are actually images that do not have any duplicates and have not, they are not going to appear in this view. So how does it work? Basically, in each group, you will be able to uh, pick and reject images. So, for example, I can use the pick button to pick an image. I can pick a second one, for example, in that group. And so I have now two picks and two rejects on uh, that group. I'm doing it manually just to show how, how it works. And I can see here the two picks and the two rejects uh, in this little summary for that group. I also have a summary at the top, which shows me the number of picks and rejects um, for the whole uh, view, so to speak. When I have a peak, I can launch an action of all my peaks, for example, because they are peaks, I want to probably flag them as, as such. I can probably also use a color flag to uh, tag them, for example, as green if, if they are, they are peaks. And if they are rejects, I can move them to the trash or I can uh, put a reject flag or I can set Again, a color, for example, I might change, choose to use brown or red uh, for uh, rejected images. I can do that group, image by image, uh, group by group. 
Um, if I want to compare images a little bit more carefully, I can use the compare tool. So I can click on compare here and it's going to open the selected group in the compare tool and I have an A image and an B image and I can compare uh, those two images. So if I select this as A and this as B, I can compare them, I can zoom in a little bit depending on the resolution of the preview that is available. Here I have a warning because uh, my the source I'm actually calling is, is not online, so I, I don't have access to the highest resolution images. But if I, if I will have access to uh, high resolution images, like in the, exam in the next example I'm going to show you, um, of course I will be able to zoom in much further than, than that. So I can go group by group, and, and do my, my selection, or I can use the rules that I've just uh, explained, and here my rules are like that, file type, image size, rating, if I click apply rule, it's going to run through all the clusters, and it's going to pick based on those rules. Below the images, I have a number of uh, attributes that are displayed such as the date, the ratings, the size, etc. And if I use any rules, we're going to display in green what are the attributes that uh, were used to select the pick. In that case, the rating, the size are some of the attributes that I used. Now I have 205 picks and 220 uh, rejected images. I can set, for example, these images to have a red um, color and these guys to have a green color. And now I've done my um, my duplication work on those groups of images. I can move forward, possibly uh, move things to the trash if I want to, but at least I've, I've gone through all those, uh, those images and I've uh, made my, my choices. Let's go to another source here for which I have more portraits and I'm going to do portrait culling on those 600 images. Here I'm going to apply the rules and because it's portrait culling, the first rule is a face quality, which is a, an AI uh, indicator that's computed from the faces. All right, so here I have my groups. I can always go back and if I want to choose uh, to have, for example, a bit more strict uh, um, similarity, you know, to, to have groups that have images that are more resembling to each other, I can do that. And here I have my, um, my groups, I can review Again, using the comparison tool, and because the images are online here, I have a much better, I have a much better uh, zoom uh, capability here between those images. So using the comparison tool, I can move between between images and uh, confirm my picks or even add more if I want to uh, have several picks per groups, I can do that. And then at the end, again, I can apply a global rule to say, for example, I want to add that, uh, set a color tag or use a pick flag or even create an album with the, the 124 images that I have selected and do something similar to uh, the ones that have been uh, rejected. So this is how culling works in uh, version 2.6. Again, you can, the power of Picto is the ability to bring together sources of different kinds. So you can uh, do culling on a collection of sources. This version of Picto is also packed with uh, a number of small improvements in many areas. And if you're running on the latest macOS version, you'll see uh, rather big changes in how we um, uh, support the new interface uh, 
on Mac OS Tower. We've also made improvements to a number of areas, um, like performances, how we generate proxies, etc. One of the um, new features that we have added to for the pro users is now the ability to um, create share spaces from subfolders. So share spaces, just as a reminder, are areas that uh, you can construct in order to have people collaborate on content. You can now, uh, for example, navigate into uh, a hierarchy of uh, subfolders and decide to add this subfolder as inside uh, as either as a new share space or in an existing share space. So let's create a new share space with this folder. So I'll call it subfolder share space. Again, I can add my uh, rights. For example, add collaborator three to that share space. Validate. So that lets me be very granular in the way I share content with others. So this is uh, version 2.6, lots of uh, improvements around culling and deduplication, uh, lots of improvements around um, reliability and speed of the application, and also user interface with macOS Tower.